So I was immediately panicked. I didn't even know who it was until I moved over there. And she had her face like turned down, so I didn't know if she was crying or laughing. I was hoping she was crying, or laughing, but she was crying. She brought her head up, and it was so dark, I couldn't see that there was any blood or anything. I said, well, let's, let's go to the nurse. And this, uh, I, oh, I think I could see this, like some small drips. But as she got up and she started through the kids, they could see, but I couldn't, that there was, it was gushing. And uh, they were freaking out, panicked, of course, over there's blood everywhere. On all over her and all over the on the floor, like on the stream on the floor. Got her out of the room and I, I could see them. If I didn't stop this, I didn't have time to get her to the I started to stop it. I was afraid she's going to bleed to death because it was just pouring out. So I had her, first I had her to squeeze the nose. That wasn't stopping it, I could tell. So I said, you need to. I was being creative. I don't know. I'm not a medical person. I said, squeeze where it hurts. Because I thought that would be where the bone broke or whatever broke. Where the vessel broke. broke. And that got stopped. Uh, slowed down. It was crazy. I sent a kid to go send the nurse. He couldn't find her. Didn't know how serious it was, apparently, or whatever. Came back and said, I can't find her. He said, go to the office and yell at them that it's a medical emergency. Yes. Until you get someone to get in here.
It is Ash Wednesday. This is the day the Lord has made. For today's service, welcome to everyone, by the way. Thank you for coming. Um, the hymns are completely in the bulletin today. Um, instead of the opening hymn, there is a Lenten Kyrie, which uh, Doug will canter. And then the other two hymns are also in the bulletin in the insert. And for uh, Tree of Life, uh, that hymn has a different verse for every week of Lent, if we sing it every week of Lent, but uh, for today the fourth verse is the general verse, um, as it is Ash Wednesday, and then the other hymn is on the other side. We put aside the A word on Sunday, and so the, the gospel acclamation has changed, and it is um, altogether different. And so um, let us know what you think. Um, Doug will do his, Doug will lead it today and uh, encourage everybody to jump in. And whenever we impose the ashes, we'll do it in procession in the aisle like we would have done for communion. There is no communion today. Um, but whenever, but when, when we do that, um, if you would prefer to have the ash, if you were prefer to have the no contact ashes instead of on your forehead, no contact uh, sprinkled over your head, which is which is an even older custom uh, than the ashes on the forehead, uh, just let me know, and 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 we will do that. Any questions about the ashes or anything else today? Doug, let's begin. This may not be familiar to everyone. I'm going to play through once before we begin. Almighty and ever living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The readings are not included in the bulletin, but the psalm is when we get there. Our first reading is from the book of Joel, the second chapter beginning at the first verse. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 51, um, verses 1 through 17. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love and your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you do life and truth to evil in me, and would have made no decisions to eat with Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. The fifth chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. We, retreat, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, and patience, 
kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. steadfast love come to us O Lord let your steadfast Gospel according to Matthew in the first chap in the sixth chapter beginning in the first verse. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God who is our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please have a seat. Trouble loves company, and I'm glad you're here. Today, it seems like we are going to disobey Jesus' very specific instructions. Because I'll invite you to receive the ashes, and we'll put a mark on your forehead. And at some point, you will leave because you can't stay here. 
and you might run into someone you know. They will know where you've been. They might not know what particular church you attended or what time the service was, but they will definitely know what you've been up to. The gospel I read just said the opposite. So what exactly are we going to do today? This service, this tradition is one of the most un misunderstood things we do as Christians. It's so easy to see the ashes as a sign of faith and it's like wearing a cross with a necklace on or a what would Jesus do bracelet. A way to let people know that you're Christian without having to have some kind of awkward conversation about all the details. But Jesus seems to be opposed to this sort of thing. That we shouldn't even let other people see us when we pray. We shouldn't make an example of ourselves. Matter of fact, it should be done in secret and actually almost as if we don't even notice it ourselves, as if the right hand is doing something the left hand doesn't even know what the other side is doing, as if it should be automatic. Our good deeds should be done so unconsciously that they're not even noticed by ourselves, let alone others. Do any of us have a friend who keeps bragging on themselves? Constantly reminding me that they were better at this or they were good at that. Is that what Ash Wednesday is? Are we supposed to be really good Christians like that? It's not an opportunity to show everyone at McDonald's on the way home that we're good Christians and that we've been to church today. The symbolism of the ashes and whatever we say, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Is to remind us today and through Lent that we are human. We keep Janie's radio station in the Jeep on 80s on 8. And I listen to KEZK 80s on the weekends. I didn't know that I got my theology from 80s music and the Human League, the song Human by the Human League from the 80s, where I absolutely did my growing up and still am mentally. I'm only human, of flesh and blood I am made. I am human, born to make mistakes. Strange words to come becoming profound words from a British sync pop group from 1986, but there it is. To be human is to fall short. When was the last time we all did something awesome and said, well, I'm only human? I say I'm only human as a way to apologize for falling short, sometimes way, way short. On Tuesday, we're on today, I mean on Ash Wednesday, we're going to put a mark on our heads and remind us that we are human. That we don't live forever and we won't be here forever. Remembering that we are dust and to dust we shall return. Reminding us that we are humans and we are here. Life is short and it is precious. But the good news is that should be today more reassuring than alarming to us. It means there's a plan. And it means there's always been a plan. So to my fellow dusty humans, Lent is not a 40-day grind until I can have a chocolate bar again. It is a reminder that we are sinners and we know it. And we are confident that Easter will come very soon. Thanks be to God.
Friends in Christ, with the whole church we enter into the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God and our neighbors and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving, and works of love. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you, to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, and by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy have infected our lives. We confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt to those who, are differ, who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. Our waste and pollution of your creation, 
our lack of concern for those who come after us. We confess to you. Have mercy on us. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust and of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penance, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ we are given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life.
prayers of the people. Draw close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God, when we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people toward justice. Lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Merciful God, renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all you have made. Merciful God, renew our civic life, O God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Merciful God, renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit, and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief, especially David Bauman, Rosalie Bishop, Barb Crane, Angela Gross, Edward Helf, Eugene Helf, Roy Crozen, Robin Shanafelt, Stacy Smith, Donna Thompson, Doug Tucker, Judy Doris. Are there others? Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Merciful God. Renew this congregation, O oh God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Merciful God, as we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you praise, O God, for all the saints who died and yet are alive with you. Receive us with them into your eternal embrace. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. I will see. 
Merciful Father, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks. Thanks.